How do I, 25F, tell my brothers, 29M, new girlfriend, 23F, that she's not invited to my wedding? TW, suicide, emotional abuse, infidelity. Buckle up, it's going to be a long one. Too long didn't read, at the end. When me and my fiancé, 25M, got engaged. My brother Peter, 29M, was married to Tina, 29F, and they have an adorable little girl together, 4F. Naturally when it came to sending wedding invitations Tina got one and I asked if my niece would be the flower girl. All good. Literally less than a month later, Tina has kicked Peter out and filed for divorce because she found out he had been cheating on her. About a month after that, during Covid lockdown no less, Peter just turns up at my parents house with the girl that he's been cheating on Tina with, Freya, 23F. At the time I thought it wouldn't last long, the wedding wouldn't be a problem. But it's now been 6 months and Freya is very much still around. My extended family, grandparents, uncles, aunts, people who are invited to the wedding, are all still under the impression that Peter and Tina are happily together because my mother wants my brother to be the one to tell them and he has not. Now, I really like Freya, she's a lot like me in many ways, but I also love Tina because she's family now. I'm a very laid back person and I really don't want drama on our wedding day. Tina has already made it clear that she and my niece won't come if Freya is there, don't blame her at all. Peter, meanwhile, has been talking about the wedding whilst Freya has been present as if he's already invited her. Peter is not known for his reasonable handling of situations that do not go his way and I fully expect him to either, a, turn up with Freya on the day even if I say not to, b, demand Freya is invited or say he won't come or, c, turn up without Freya and cause a scene with Tina. All of which equals drama and awkward explanations to the family that I'd really rather not deal with on our wedding day of all days. Freya seems reasonable so I feel like talking to her about it may be the best way to go about it but honestly I'm dreading the fallout and I don't know how to phrase it. Any advice would be hugely appreciated. Too long didn't read, brother cheated on his wife with his new girlfriend, wife is invited to my wedding, don't know how to tell brother slash new girlfriend that to avoid drama I don't want the new girlfriend to come. Edit, a lot of you are asking why I still have Peter in my life and the simplified answer is that I'm scared of cutting him out. He is bipolar which is why me and my family tiptoe around him as he has threatened suicide in the past and we are all terrified of pushing him over the edge. A lot of you are also condemning Freya, which may be warranted, however Peter is a compulsive liar and very efficient gaslighter and I sincerely doubt Freya knows the full story. My best guess is that Peter told Freya that Tina was a horrible person and he was miserable in his marriage and won her over that way. Of course, I could be wrong and maybe Freya gets kicks from sleeping with married men, who knows. To those of you suggesting Tina is holding my niece hostage, she has made it clear that she doesn't want my niece to meet Freya until the divorce is finalized as she feels it sets a bad example, infidelity, for my niece and I actually completely agree. Thank you all for your words, the good and the bad, I'm reading every single comment and trying to reply where I can. Be blunt, let him flip out. You are an adult on the brink of starting your own family, and at your family events, he will abide by your rules. Then you tell the groomsmen to keep an eye on this guy. If he shows up with the girl, don't let him in. If he starts bitching you out at your own wedding, remove him. Unfortunately he has had years of practice and reinforcement that he can walk all over me and our family because we are all pushovers and he is quite frankly, scary. The more I think about it the more I feel like hiring a bouncer slash shusher slash security person is a good idea, to keep any potential drama scenes away from the bulk of the guests, and us. Please appoint someone, an usher, to stand at the door in case your brother tries to pull some fuck shit. Uninvite your brother. When anyone protests tell them it's your wedding and to get bent. If your brother tries to show up uninvited have some of your groomsmen explain that actions have consequences before sending him packing. Enjoyed the day drama free with your niece and sill. Also if you are worried he'll make a scene spend a few hundred and hire an off-duty cops for security at the door. 
I would tell them both they aren't invited personally. If Peter hasn't told anyone he isn't with Tina anymore, aren't there going to be questions? Is he really planning on using your wedding to announce his divorce because that is what it sounds like? I 33F snooped and saw that my husband 36M has been getting into red pill stuff since we had our daughter and it's really worrying me. I'm putting here because I really don't know what to do. I've been married to my husband for 10 years, we have a 4 year old daughter and 8 year old a son together. We're both teachers but have been mostly working from home since fall due to everything. He's also the assistant band director so he has to go in 5 days a week for 2 hours. We've had a very good relationship free from many troubles and we've been so happy together. Recently I've noticed that he has been making comments that seem on some level sexist. Not overtly sexist but enough that after thinking on it you could tell it was rooted in sexism. He'd make comments about how some women we're mutual friends with were married to beaters as and at one point he said beta backshaw buckside. And I had no idea what he was talking about at the time and didn't call him on it. This week he made a comment that indirectly said that he was disappointed that I wasn't a virgin when we got together. This made me feel like complete shit. I used to struggle with feeling bad that I had slept with people that didn't deserve me before I met my husband and this just brought of those feelings back. At this point I realized something was up. I know I shouldn't have done this but I looked through his phone and laptop and I saw he had been visiting MGTO and Red Pill forums. He even had a Reddit account that was 4 months younger than our daughter. I really am at a loss. I don't know what is pushing him in this direction, and I don't know what I could do to stop him. I'm especially worried that he might start saying things like this around our kids and turn our son into a misogynist and makes our daughter think this is how women are supposed to act. I really need any form of help. Sometimes when people say foolish things to you, a strategy I employ is, I haven't heard of that, what do you mean? Because then that person can't rely on their buzzwords anymore and have to unpack their prejudices right there. Usually they'll either realize it's messed up and quit or get frustrated and quit. You should absolutely talk to your husband and try calling out the stuff he says, if only to acknowledge it's something new to you and not part of a marriage you'd like to stay in. Locked as comments are going off the rails. Thanks to all who provided advice. You guys have to talk. Obviously you know, not us, if he has the capability to outgrow this. It's worrying as hell that someone with a family and real future is in any way buying into the MGTOG garbage fire. Maybe he needs to understand what he's putting at risk. The bottom line though is that you don't deserve to have this creeping into your marriage and him making you feel bad because 4chan told him so. I mean I don't get this. There are men for whom nothing is going on so they fall into this rabbit hole. Okay. He is a man with a job family, a woman who loves him, kids and yet he goes into this BS. Oh god. Referring to some men as beaters? Lamenting about you not be a virgin over 10 years later? This is already overtly sexist, not subtlety. Quadriplegic M23 tired of being alone and tired of being so dependent on others. I broke my neck a few weeks after I graduated high school. I was about to go off to college and finally leave my home and family. I instead ended up being hospitalized for three months relearning how to live as a severely handicapped kid. The funny thing is the second I felt my neck snap I knew my life was over. When I woke up in the hospital I didn't even so much as cry. I was pretty hyper aware of my situation when I woke, I wasn't in any sort of denial I knew what my life would be like. And funny enough I was right. Simple everyday things we do without thinking suddenly were difficult tasks I can't walk, I can't use my hands much, I can't do any of the things I'm used to slash want to do. I've never had a girlfriend, I've never had sex, I've never even kissed a girl and now how am I even going to get a girlfriend when I can't even take care of menial everyday tasks. It really hurts my heart knowing I'm never going to get married, have kids, or even just knowing that my feelings could even be reciprocated by a girl. All I've ever wanted was for someone to feel the same way I feel about them. I'm so sick of just being alive I'm stuck in between my parents fighting and their passive aggressive BS and I know I'm for sure not helping. I'm sick of being sick all the 
time and having very bad pain all over my body every single day medicine doesn't help sometimes it hurts so bad I can't even get out of bed. How am I supposed to get a job when doing nothing all day already exhausts me? I'm just so done. And no I don't want to see a therapist it won't change my problems. TDLR, I'm sick of being handicapped and alone. And no I don't want to see a therapist it won't change my problems. No, it won't. But it will change your ability to deal with your problems in constructive ways. And this will improve your life. At the moment you are catastrophizing and predicting worst case scenarios for everything. That's not healthy or helpful. What happened to you sucks. Your life is horrible right now. But, we only get one life. This is what you've got, you need to learn how to make it as good as you can with the hand you've been dealt. It could get way better than it is, it's your job to find the people who will help you make that happen. Quadriplegia doesn't have to mean you're a shut-in. I'm a college physics professor and both I and a number of my colleagues have had quadriplegic students. Heck, they even perform labs by working with their group members, or having an assistant. Plus look at Stephen Hawking who not only had an active professional career, but had two wives, and there's even some evidence he cheated on his first wife with the woman who would become the second. Have you gotten the chance to talk with a counselor slash therapist yet? Yeah your life isn't roses and flowers, but it's still life, and they can help you come to terms with living it. Hey mate. Can I give you the Facebook details of a mate of mine who is also a quadriplegic from his early 20 IES, is currently studying at school. He could give you some great personal advice.